Uh, I have a feeling that this is going to be a very, very long video. But think of it kind of like a podcast. You know, you can put me in the background and paint yourself, clean your room, work on homework, you know, do all those good things. I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank Skillshare for partnering with me on this video. Today I thought that we would do a little bit of a different kind of video. I have a graduation cap that I was supposed to wear during my commencement ceremony that is happening in four weeks. Kind of crazy, I can't believe I'm graduating in four weeks. Since the class of 2020 no longer has the opportunity to participate in a real live commencement ceremony, I thought that I would still paint my cap anyway and do a little bit of a Q&A slash college advice slash the things that I learned from my time in university. I'm using a selection of the Turner Acryl Gouache in the Japanese colors. I'll leave all the colors that I'm using on the screen as well as in the description box. I posted on Twitter asking if you guys had any questions about my time at community college or at UC Davis. I've compiled a small list of questions that I thought would be nice to answer. So here we go. So the question I get asked the most often is why I chose physics or what led me to choose the degree. So when I graduated from high school in 2016, that's a really long time ago. I graduated from high school in 2016 and I didn't really know what I wanted to do in terms of college. I graduated from university. The only universities that I got into were private schools across the country. And unfortunately, it's just way too expensive. And I and my family couldn't justify spending $75,000 a year on tuition for a school that I may or may not even, you know, follow through on. Let's just say when I graduated high school, it was very unlikely that I would finish school. I don't know, I just had zero interest in being in school and it was just like not the best time in my life mentally. I also don't think that I was mature enough to go away for four years and my mental health wasn't the best. So I thought that it would, my family and I decided that it would be the best if I stayed at home and went to community college instead. Which hindsight 2020, I am so, so grateful that I went because those two years at community college, I went to Moore Park College down in Moore Park, California, in case you're very curious. I'm very proud of being a community college graduate. Um, and I am very, very proud of the community college that I went to. So I have like no problem sharing that information. But yeah, I went to Moore Park College and I still had no idea what I wanted to do. And at the time I was like, you know what? Maybe I do want to be a doctor because between the ages of seventh grade to like actually my first year at community college, I wanted to be a doctor. I just didn't know what I wanted to specifically major in because there is no pre-med major. Like that is a myth. You have to just go through four years of undergraduate school to become a doctor here in the United States. So I was like, you know what? Screw it, that's fine. I will go down the list and take a bunch of medical prerequisite courses and we'll figure out what to do after I do that. So I started with a class in biology, calculus and physics. Probably the worst schedule <laughs> to give a newly college student, but because I had taken, a, you know, the AP course load in high school, I thought that I could handle it. High inside 2020, horrible mistake. I ended up dropping out of that biology class and replacing it with like, I don't know, some really chill music class or something like that. In high school, I had a really, really bad relationship with math and science. I was in the dumb kids math. I say that in big quotes, the way that my high school structured the classes. If you were not in like the AP honors math courses, I don't know, it was like really frowned upon. You were seen as dumb. You were seen as stupid and bad at math. And like that was difficult for me to, I guess, deal with because A, growing up in an Asian family, it's kind of expected that you're good at math. And B, I have brothers that are very, very good at math. My brothers are like hands down much more academically strong than me. They know how to study really well. They know how to test really well. Whereas I don't necessarily have those strengths. And that's okay because different strokes for different folks. But like growing up, that was hard because you're constantly compared to your siblings. You're constantly compared to the people around you. And high school and early college, Michelle was like, we are bad at math. We are dumb. This is not something that I'm ever going to be able to do. And 
you know, that's that. And then I took physics. I didn't realize that you didn't have to take the calculus-based physics. As a pre-med, I signed up for it because I thought that was the correct physics to take in order to be a pre-med student. And um, I fell in love with it. I had the best community college physics professor. It was such a wonderful experience. There was finally someone in my academic career that like believed in me. It was really nice to feel seen, to feel like there was someone in my corner being like, you can do this, Michelle, you are smart, you are capable. And my professor like took a lot of extra time um, during his office hours to help me, like walk me through things that were simple, like kinematics, because I had a really, really difficult time understanding it. And the physics department at Park College did a really exceptional job at creating an environment in which everyone felt, uh, it felt very inclusive, it felt very supportive. And we weren't seeing each other as competitors, we were seeing each other as, you know, friends and colleagues. And I don't think that without that experience, I would have studied physics. I think that, I don't know, the experience that I have at Davis is a little bit different. I think that the environment that I personally experienced was a little less inclusive, a little more gatekeeping. And I think that's the biggest problem that I have with STEM. But yeah, that's why I decided to study physics. I really fell in love with the subject because of the professor and he created such an amazing environment. And for once I felt like I was studying something that I actually was interested in, I actually cared about. And to me, unlocking the secrets of the universe was just so, it felt so powerful. I felt very empowered. Granted, um, it's not as glamorous as people think it is. A lot of my degree, is just math, Python, and learning how to problem solve. But I think that if I could do it again, actually, I don't know whether or not I would have chosen physics, uh, simply because I don't think that, I don't think that graduate school is for me. I just don't think that the physics environment and I mesh all that well together, just because like it is kind of, a toxic environment sometimes there's quite a bit of gatekeeping and I don't know there there's a certain degree of like sexism and sexual harassment that I don't really want to get into that like I have personally experienced but at the same time the people that I chose to surround myself with at my time at Moore Park and my time at Davis have been nothing but positive like the people that i that are my friends within the department have just been like the greatest people i think that if i could go back and do college all over again and you know choose my major with all the knowledge that i have now i would have done computer science and design double major but if i had to do all of this from without the knowledge that i had i think i made the right choice i've learned a lot about myself through studying physics. I've learned a lot about grit. I've learned a lot about problem solving. I've learned a lot about doing things that are like objectively difficult and are challenging. The biggest takeaway that I have from studying physics is that like, because I can get through this degree, I feel like I can get through anything. The past four years have been undoubtedly the most difficult four years of my life, personally, academically, um, socially. So I feel like because I've proven to myself with this degree, with this $5 hat, because I can get through that, like I can get through anything. There will be nothing that is as difficult as my undergraduate career. Or at least I'd like to hope so. I know that's probably not the case, but um, I'm very proud of myself. I'm proud that I didn't drop out of physics. I am proud of the mental fortitude that I have been able to develop, the discipline, the problem solving skills, and I don't wanna to toot my own horn, but I honestly am genuinely proud of myself because four years ago, I don't think that I would have been able to do this. And if you had told, you know, 18 year old Michelle, you're gonna graduate from UC Davis with a degree in physics, I would have been like, no, I'm pretty sure you're lying. Stop messing with me. Because my relationship with mathematics has improved a lot. This like, 
incredible feeling of imposter syndrome and not feeling good enough or smart enough. I mean, like I still, you know, struggle with that occasionally in different industries, like in the content creation industry. But when it comes to doing math and science, like I don't think I feel that anymore. I know that some people catch on more quickly than others. I feel like with a little bit of time and patience and practice, like I could learn anything. And that is what I am taking away from my degree. It's not how to do, you know, Gauss's law, how to take fancy integrals, how to do, what is it? What did I learn to, <laughs> what was my degree? It's not how to do like solid state physics. It's the fact that because I have this very broad skill set of mathematical, scientific, and you know, communicative ability, I feel like I can learn anything. It's just a matter of whether or not I put in the time to learn it. Um, and like that, that feels very empowering. The world is your oyster. All of the knowledge, the secrets of the universe can be unlocked if you put your time into it. So I also received quite a few questions about my um, experience as a woman in STEM. And I will say it hasn't been the prettiest or the nicest or the most enjoyable road. What's unfortunate is that I have experienced, you know, like sexual harassment in labs, whether it's like verbal or physical, it's all shitty. I've also had people call me like stupid or slutty or be a general dickhole to me because I guess for some reason when I'm in class in, you know, my heels, I talk to my friends about like, art and fashion people think I'm an idiot and I guess like that was pretty frustrating because people were like oh you kind of just seem dumb <laughs> I don't know I don't know what I'm supposed to say to that but yeah like those are some dumb shitty things that have happened to me but I feel like I'm fortunate enough to have enough of a thick skin to be like okay like that's your problem if you think I'm an idiot I know I'm not spicy times I don't want to turn people off from doing physics and I know it's getting a lot better it's just like I had a very few select experiences that almost turned me away from being a human in STEM, but while there are people that are just rude and shitty and negative, there's also a greater quantity of people who want you to succeed, who want to be your friend, who want to support you. They are much more common than you think. It's obviously like easier for me to say this now, being on the other side. Don't let some asshole who's telling you that you're stupid stop you from pursuing this don't be afraid to talk about it with other people whether it's girls or guys or you know everybody on that spectrum like if you were experiencing something shitty you have to let someone know the only person that is going to be able to advocate for you is you because you're the only one that knows what's going on and if you see your friends being harassed by someone in lab or in lecture or if someone if you see someone you know hurting someone else putting someone else down call it out that is like the biggest thing that frustrates me about stem a lot of the times at least through my personal experience because a lot of people just won't call it out because they're scared call it out it's so important to make this space inclusive and available for everyone and we can't create inclusive spaces if we aren't going to support the population's most vulnerable don't allow negativity and harassment to happen then you're just as complicit be an ally not a bystander. So I get a lot of questions about community college versus UC Davis. So this is the part of the video where we'll address all of those cues. Community college versus UC Davis in terms of academic rigor, I gotta say, um, at the very least with the community college that I went to, we had a really strong math and science department. Also calculus is calculus everywhere. Intro to physics is intro to physics everywhere. Between community college and Davis, I would say that you're getting the same information. You're getting the same teaching. And I will say all of my friends that went to community college, I think that we generally had a more positive first two years of undergraduate experience because at community college, the professors aren't there to do research. They're not there to produce for the university. 
the only job of community college professors is to teach. And so because of that, I had some of the best educators, educators that were genuinely interested in my success and had a vested interest in my success. And because of that, I think I have a better understanding of the material than if I would have gone to Davis um, and taken calc and intro to physics here. I think that community colleges are also a lot more flexible in terms of the kinds of courses that you can take because you're not on a super strict timeline. You can go to community college for three years instead of two like a lot of my friends did and take a broader range of courses. Like I took ballet at community college basically every single semester I was there and it was amazing and that's not something that I would have had the opportunity or the money to do it. So I will say I saved a shit ton of money by going to community college. The amount of tuition that I paid at community college for two years, that was summer sessions included, was about this, I think slightly cheaper than my one year spent at UC Davis. A lot of people that I know who went to community college, even though they had amazing grades out of high school and could have gone to like, you know, freaking Cal straight out of high school, they, chose to go to community college because it would have been a less of a financial burden on their families. I think some of my best undergraduate experiences came from community college and it's a kind of environment that I don't think is replicable in a traditional four-year university setting because nobody at CC really has an ego. You know, whether or not you are the top of your class or the bottom of your class, we all are in the same place. We're all looking to transfer. We're all looking to, um, you know, grow as human beings and quote, quote, get out of CC. The two years I spent there were, in hindsight, one of the best experiences that I've ever had. Um, so in terms of academic rigor, I would say it's the same, but the community that community college offers is unlike anything else. Like, I met my best friend at CC. Donya, if you're watching this, um, you know. Some of my favorite people are community college people, and even at Davis, we have a pretty tight group of community college transfer students in the physics department, and I'm also really grateful for that. Students who, like, started their four-year journey, at least within the circles that I run in at the Davis Physics and Engineering Department. Like people who've been there for four years versus transfers, like everyone's been very nice and very inclusive for the most part. Yeah, I'm just very glad to go to a school that isn't, um, that is very inclusive or at least tries to be and is full of good, wholesome people. So this part of the Q&A is all about my college experience here, like partying and stuff. <laughs> um, I don't know why I got all nervous. It did a nervous giggle. Don't worry, mom and dad, you can watch this. There's nothing uh, illicit or sketchy going on. In terms of partying, I didn't really do a lot of that in my four years of college. I will lie, the partying has increased quite a bit <laughs> my senior year because I just had more friends to party with. The friends that I made when I first transferred to Davis weren't particularly big drinkers. Like our idea of a really fun hangout time was sober fun time, playing Super Smash Bros on the Switch, Wii parties, like that was our idea of a good time. And I genuinely love how wholesome <laughs> my friend group is. But when senior year started, kicking in and I was getting really, really done with school. I mean, like, I still feel like I'm pretty uh, done with school, but I met a group of friends that were into craft beer and craft alcohol. And like, that was a really positive experience, you know? Like, we didn't drink to get hammered. We drank for the flavor. <laughs> we went to breweries and bars um do beer tastings and wine tastings and yeah like i think that is what i miss the most about school not being in session legit because like my my friends and i had all these fun plans we would hit up breweries um i was supposed to go beer tasting for my 22nd birthday uh which happened the day of the lockdown so we couldn't go which was a really big bummer and things like that,
but if you're into drinking, there are people to drink with. If you're not into drinking, you don't have to drink. If you are looking to get really pretentious with your drinking, there are obviously people for that. You shouldn't feel pressured to drink or smoke or party or, you know, do things that you're uncomfortable with in college because whether you go to like Davis or UCSB, which is known for partying, um, there are going to be people there for you. And like a really good group of friends shouldn't pressure you to do things. Like I personally don't smoke or do any of the sticky icky because like I personally, I hate the smell of it. But I have friends who do. They have offered me, but I have personally never taken it and they've never pressured me into participating. Like it's important to just make sure that your friends respect your boundaries and that you respect your friends' boundaries. It goes both ways. I won't lie, I'm really bummed that I couldn't go beer tasting on my 22nd birthday. It was supposed to be a blast. I miss my friends a lot. Yeah, honestly, I'm really actually quite sad. Anyway, on a less depressing note, let's go to a different topic of conversation. One with less longing and <sighs> desire for a pastime. This is the part of the video where I'm offering my unsolicited advice to high school seniors or community college transfers. The biggest things that I took away from community college are probably, number one, take this time to explore who you are. Even if you are very confident in who you are as a person, um, you've just spent the past 18 to 22 years of your life at home. There's a good chance that you haven't had an opportunity to know what you're like when you can call your own shots every day for an extended period of time in your life. Use college as an opportunity to explore yourself, to explore your interests. So just know that the next period of your life in university, you get to call the shots. You get to choose whether or not you get to do certain things. And don't be afraid to say yes to the experiences and opportunities that are offered to you, within reason, of course. If a professor asks you to do research with them and you are dying to do research with them but you don't feel like you're good enough, say yes! If there is a romantic partner individual in your life that you would like to go on a date on and you're afraid to ask them, do it anyway! If you are dying to get into like a dance crew or a sorority or a fraternity or whatever it is, just do it. You're never gonna have the opportunity to do things as freely and as easily as you can now. You might as well take the opportunity while you can have it, right? While you can take it. Or another skill that I learned while at college is learning how to ask for help. Whether it's academically, medically, emotionally, I used to be a very, very proud person where I felt like I couldn't ask for help and I didn't want to do things if I was bad at them, which is a complete 180 to the kind of person I am now. I am the first person to try something, even if I know I will be bad at it, um, as long as it isn't a scary thing like heights or bug related. <laughs> it's important to know that like you're not going to be the best at everything that you do. And that's okay. Even if you were the top of your class when you graduated high school or community college, even though I definitely was not, that's okay. Be okay to ask for help because you can't, you know, run a company by yourself. You can't steer a cruise ship by yourself. How can you be expected to go through life by yourself without asking for help? I, know, I didn't expect to be this sad about my undergraduate experience being over because I, I was the kind of person that was like, oh, I'm so ready to graduate. I can't wait for this to be over. Um, school is exhausting. It's making me sad. Thinking back, I wish I had a little bit more time or at the very least, I wish I had a much more satisfying and wholesome ending to my year at in college. I wish I had a graduation commencement ceremony, but I need to learn to accept the things that I cannot change. Well, what can you do? What can we do about this? There's nothing that we can do, so we might as well just accept that this is our reality and 
make the best of it, right? And in my case, making the best of it is painting my cap at home and filming a YouTube video on it. Doesn't look that great up close, but maybe it looks nice from afar. I'm not done yet. I'm gonna add light clouds and things, but you are in control of your own destiny and you should not be afraid to exercise that power, that ability. Anyways, this is it for me today. This is my graduation cap. And here's to sunnier skies and brighter futures ahead. Class of 2020, we got this. I believe in us and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Annyeong! I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank Skillshare for partnering with me on this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. I've been using Skillshare to help me practice some mindfulness and settle my mind. I know that it's been really easy to just scroll mindlessly into the social media void while in quarantine, but it's done a lot for my mental health and I am a really, really big fan of Skillshare. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, which is two cups of coffee by Arlisha Yetzer. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial of a premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Again, thank you so much Skillshare for partnering with me on this video and thank you for watching. And if you were a part of the class of 2020 or if you are someone that is really just having a hard time at school or in life, know that you are not alone and that I am here for you, this community is here for you and we can get it to it together. Go team. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.